blood, infection, no hospital. You've got 48 hours before sepsis turns you into compost. Let's fix that. How to heal wounds without hospitals when the world has ended. And more importantly, why you'd need to. The pharmacies are looted. The hospitals are dark. The last doctor you saw was being dragged into the woods by something that used to be human. You've got a gash on your arm, dirt in the wound, and about two days before infection makes the decision for you. No antibiotics, no stitches, no anesthetic. Just you, some trash, and the biology you should have paid attention to in high school. No worries, we're making DIY medicine. Stop the bleeding first, or bleed out like an idiot. Step one, don't panic. Step two, ignore step one because you're definitely panicking. Blood is leaving your body faster than your will to live. You need to stop it. Find something cleanish. A shirt, a rag, a torn piece of upholstery from a car seat. Press it directly onto the wound, hard. Like you're trying to smother a small fire. Cause that's basically what you're doing. Smothering the leak before your blood pressure drops and you start seeing your dead relatives. If it's a limb, elevate it. Gravity is free, use it. Blood flows down, wounds flow less when they're up. Basic physics. If the bleeding doesn't stop in five minutes, you need pressure, real pressure. Wrap it tight with cloth, a belt, duct tape, whatever. Not tourniquet tight, unless you're cool with losing the limb. Just enough to make the bleeding stop whining. If it's spurting, that's arterial. You've got minutes. Find the pressure point between the wound and the heart. Press hard. Don't let go until the spurting becomes oozing. Then wrap it like your life depends on it, because it does. Your body holds about five liters of blood. Lose two and you're unconscious. Lose three and you're a statistic. If the cloth soaks through, don't remove it, stack another one on top. Peeling it off restarts the clotting process and you just wasted precious seconds you don't have. Arterial blood is bright red and pulses with your heartbeat. Venous blood is dark and flows steady. Know the difference, it tells you how fast you're dying. If you pass out from blood loss, your body goes into shock. Your brain shuts down non-essential systems to keep you alive. That's your last warning. After that, it's lights out, permanently. Cold, clammy skin, a rapid, weak pulse, confusion, that's hypovolemic shock. Your organs are screaming for oxygen they're not getting. You've got maybe 10 minutes before your kidneys start shutting down. Move faster. If you're alone and bleeding from your leg or arm, lie flat on your back. Elevate the limb above your heart using anything. A backpack, a cinder block, a corpse if you have to. Gravity becomes your medic when there's no one else. Spider webs, actual spider webs, are rich in vitamin K and have been used for centuries to stop bleeding. Find a fresh web, ball it up, press it into the wound. It's sterile, it's sticky, and it works. Yes, really. No, the spider doesn't come with it. Your body's clotting cascade involves 13 different proteins activating in sequence like dominoes. Platelets rush in, fibrin threads weave a net, red blood cells get trapped. It's a biological miracle happening in real time. Don't screw it up by moving too much or peeling off the bandage to check if it's working. Let it clot. Let's continue with clean the wound, because infection kills slower, but just as dead. Congrats, you're not bleeding out, yet. Now comes the fun part, cleaning. Dirt, debris, and bacteria are having a party in your open flesh. You need to evict them, fast. Find water, any water, boil it if you can. No fire? No problem. Use alcohol. Vodka, whiskey, rubbing alcohol from a looted pharmacy, hand sanitizer, anything with ethanol or isopropyl. Pour it directly into the wound. It is going to hurt a lot. Scream if you want. No one's judging. The pain means it's working. 
alcohol denatures proteins in bacterial cell membranes, ripping them apart like wet tissue paper. No alcohol? Use salt water. Dissolve as much salt as you can into boiled or clean water. It's not sterile, but it's hypertonic, meaning it sucks moisture out of bacterial cells through osmosis until they shrivel and die. Pour it over the wound. Let it sting. That's the feeling of survival. If you've got soap, actual soap, not just a memory of it, use it. Lather up around the wound. Soap molecules have a hydrophobic tail and a hydrophilic head. They grab onto oils and dirt and bacteria, then rinse away with water. It's chemistry pretending to be magic. Pat it dry with something clean. Or clean-ish. We're past sterile. We're in good enough territory now. Infection doesn't announce itself with sirens. It creeps in quiet. A little warmth. A little redness. By the time you notice the red streaks crawling up your arm, the bacteria are already in your bloodstream. If you've got iodine, the brown stuff from first aid kits, dilute it with water until it looks like weak tea, then flush the wound. It's a nuclear bomb for bacteria and won't torch your tissue like pure iodine would. Every piece of dirt left behind is a potential colony of Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, or worse, Clostridium, the bacteria that causes tetanus and gangrene. Clean it like your limb depends on it, because it literally does. Close the wound, because open flesh is an invitation. You've got options. None of them are great. Option one, duct tape and superglue. Yes, superglue. Cyanoacrylate, the stuff in superglue, was literally used in the Vietnam War to close wounds. It polymerizes on contact with moisture, forming a hard, waterproof seal. Pinch the wound edges together, apply a thin line of glue along the seam, hold it for 30 seconds. Don't glue your fingers together. If you do, you're on your own. No superglue? Use duct tape. It's not ideal, it's not sterile, but it holds. Cut thin strips, pinch the wound closed, tape across it like you're sealing a package. It's called a butterfly bandage, except made by someone who's given up on life. Option two, sewing. Find thread, fishing line, dental floss. Boil it, let it cool. Find a needle, sterilize it in fire or alcohol. Thread it. Take a deep breath, push the needle through one side of the wound, then the other, pull it snug, tie it off. Repeat every few millimeters. It's gonna hurt, but you know what hurts more? Dying of infection because you were too squeamish to sew yourself shut like a torn jacket. The biology here is simple. Your body wants to heal. It's already sending fibroblasts to the wound site to lay down collagen and rebuild tissue. You're just giving it a head start by holding the edges together. Superglue burns when it hits the wound. That's the exothermic reaction as it polymerizes. It's not infection, it's chemistry. Grate your teeth and let it seal. If you're sewing and the needle won't go through, you're hitting scar tissue or thick skin. Angle it differently, push harder, or find a thicker needle. Giving up isn't an option when the alternative is bleeding out in your sleep. Don't use cotton thread. It absorbs moisture and becomes a highway for bacteria to march straight into your body. Synthetic thread, fishing line, or dental floss. Anything that doesn't soak up filth. Let's continue with fight infection because bacteria don't take days off. You've stopped the bleeding, you close the wound, now you wait and pray and watch for signs of infection. Redness spreading outward, heat, pus, swelling, red streaks crawling up your arm like tiny highways of death, that's lymphangitis, that's your lymphatic system screaming, that's infection. You need antibiotics, but the pharmacies are empty, so you improvise, honey, Real honey, not the fake corn syrup garbage. Raw, unfiltered honey. It's hygroscopic. It pulls moisture out of bacterial cells. It's also acidic and contains hydrogen peroxide. Spread it directly onto the wound. Cover it with cloth. Change it daily. 
Ancient Egyptians used honey to treat wounds. If it worked for them, it'll work for you. Garlic. Crush raw garlic into a paste. It contains allicin, a compound that disrupts bacterial enzymes. Smear it on the wound. It'll burn. It'll smell. You'll smell. But bacteria hate it more than you do. Willow bark tea. Find a willow tree. Strip the bark. Boil it in water. Drink it. It contains salicin, the precursor to aspirin. It won't cure infection, but it'll reduce inflammation and pain. Your body can focus on healing instead of screaming. Maggots. Yes, maggots. If the wound is necrotic, black, dead tissue, and you've got nothing else, find blowfly larvae. Medical-grade maggots are a thing. They eat dead tissue and leave living tissue alone. They also secrete antimicrobial compounds. Place them in the wound, cover it loosely, let them work. Remove them after a day or two. It's disgusting. It's medieval. It works. Manage pain, because suffering is optional, sort of. You're in pain, obviously. Here's what you can do about it. Alcohol. Drink it. Ethanol is a central nervous system depressant. It won't stop the pain, but it'll make you care less. Don't overdo it. You need to stay functional. Willow bark tea, already mentioned, works. Distraction. Your brain can only process so much input. Focus on something else. Count, breathe, recite something, sing, scream. Whatever keeps your mind off the fact that you're stitching yourself together with fishing line in a burnout gas station. Watch for sepsis, because this is where it gets real. Infection can go systemic. That means it's in your bloodstream. That means you're dying. Signs, fever, chills, rapid heartbeat, confusion, extreme fatigue, clammy skin. If you've got these, you're in trouble, deep trouble. You need real antibiotics. You need a hospital. But there are no hospitals. So you do what you can. Keep the wound clean. Keep it covered. Keep yourself hydrated. Your immune system is fighting a war. Give it resources. Water, food, rest. If you've got any antibiotics, even expired ones, take them. Follow the dosage. Don't stop early. Bacteria that survive become resistant, and you don't get a second chance. The science behind survival. Your body is a biological machine. When you get cut, your platelets rush to the site and form a clot. Your white blood cells flood the area to fight infection. Fibroblasts lay down collagen to rebuild tissue. Epithelial cells crawl across the wound to close the gap. It's called wound healing. It's automatic, it's incredible, but it needs help. It needs a clean environment, it needs the wound edges close together, it needs time, and it needs you to not die of infection in the meantime. Everything you just did, the cleaning, the closing, the infection control, is just buying time for your body to do what it already knows how to do. You're not the hero, your immune system is. You're just the janitor. Final thoughts. You've stopped the bleeding. You've cleaned the wound. You've closed it. You've fought infection with trash and chemistry. You've managed pain with plants and alcohol. You've watched for sepsis like a paranoid hawk. If the wound starts to heal, new pink tissue, less pain, no pus, congrats, you survived. If it doesn't, well, you tried. That's more than most people can say. No hospitals? No problem. Just biology, chemistry, and the stubborn refusal to die in a ditch. The world ended? You didn't. Not yet. Now go find clean water. You're gonna need it.